This segment brought to you by Bravo Company USA. Larry Vickers here, my buddy Ken Hackathorn, our good friend Carl. How you doing? ISS Independent Studio Services out here in LA. We're doing a movie gun segment for the next however long. Did this almost two years ago with Carl, right before Shot yeah, Show. A year and a half. It's a huge hit. It was the most popular um, episode I ever did of LAV Live, so I figured we'd revisit that. Our buddy Chen Lee lined this up. SMG Lee right over here. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> and then we're going to get it going. Me, Ken, and Carl. Without further ado, let's have at it. What we got? MP5. Sicario. Sicario. Yeah, baby. Yeah, Sicario. And what suppressor is on it? Gem Tech? Yeah, it's it's an inert Gem Tech that they built up for as many moons ago. And then Knight's Rail, an aim point. Yeah. Sicario fans. I know you guys probably did some rubber guns for this too, I would imagine. Yeah, we did. Um, and uh, I don't think we had replicas. If we did, it would have been Airsoft variants, but uh, I'm not, I don't recall those. Cool. Sicario MP5. Now... On the Sicario theme, Daniel Defense M4 that Josh Brolin carried, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. There you go, with an EOTech. I, you could spot it as a Daniel Defense gun because of the buttstock. Yeah, and in the tunnel shootout scene, it, you know, you picked it up pretty quick. Yeah, it was real obvious to see. Cool. Is this select fire? Is it semi? Uh, those are those are full autos. Um, they're, they're actually... ISS manufactured full autos. Cool. So. Josh Brolin, Daniel Defense, Sicario. Right there. All right, now, you know what this is? Shotgun from No Country for Old Men. With the 1100 Remington. With the fake suppressor. suppressor. He did a little work there, and Woody Harrelson was on the other end of this. Yeah, yeah. So. 1187. Oh, is it? 1187. Yeah. Uh, it, it was uh, Javier Bardem. Is the actress? Yeah. 1187, suppressed. Excellent. There you go. No Country for Old Men. Cool. Yeah, and this gun, Larry, this was, a, we actually didn't do this movie. This was done by uh, Mike Gibbons back in the day. We, we have since acquired his inventory. Cool. And there was a pair of these, and the other one's at the NRA National Firearms Museum. Cool. All right, what's next? Oh, well, dude, this is Ken Hackathorn request. <laughs> what do we got, Ken? This is the M1 Grand that Clint Eastwood used in Grand Torino. Remember the great line? Get off my lawn! Yep. Classic piece. Great line. <laughs> okay, so the gun itself is a Springfield Armory. Yep. And it's a 1,900,000 serial number gun. Yeah. Cool. Classic. And it's got the, look at the bar. Yeah, lock bar sight. Oh, yeah. Pretty neat. Yeah, yeah we had, uh, I want to say we had about 350 grands go to Iceland for letters for, or for flags of our fathers. And a lot of them didn't have the proper early sight. So we just literally welded some pieces of bar stock on there to make it look like, like yeah. 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 <laughs> We had a bunch of original. Which is a common error in World War II movies. Yes, it is. Because they show Grands with the updated site, which didn't exist. Right. Yeah. There you go. M1 Garand, Grand Torino, Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Cool. Way cool. All right. Black Panther. Black Panther. Mm -hmm. BCM. BCM for Black Panther with an LMT M203 grenade launcher attached. Yeah, exactly. And the, the Trigicon. Kind of a neat looking gun. It's it's not real practical with that grenade launcher mounted like that, but it looks cool. Looks good in movies. In movies, yeah. yeah. Good deal. And you got mag pull offset sights, offset iron sights, mag pulls. I see. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're, we're we we like mag pull. They're good friends of ours. Good deal, brother. BCM getting some love, which is outstanding. Cool. Excellent. There you go. From twelve strong. Twelve strong. Oh yeah. You had to source some vintage stuff for this, the vintage Knight's Vert Grip. 
yep. rail system. Yeah, the, the ninth grips were fairly simple for us to do because we already had so many of them in the rail systems. The hard part on that, if you can believe it or not, is those N1 stocks. The butt stock, yeah, I was yeah. going to say that. Uh, that we was, we that had was, a conversation earlier today about that. These yeah. are yeah, but generally it's set up proper period. I mean, it's laid out pretty much with the way it should have been at that time frame. Yep. Yeah, the PEC, two, uh, or not the PEC 2s, but the, the Surefires are a little bit more difficult to find, too. Yeah. Um, Those old 6Ps are hard to locate. Okay, yeah. That's cool. 12 strong, cold M4 carbine. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> Clint Eastwood fans. Model 29. Dirty Harry. Okay. Now, like Carl was telling us, this is one of many that was actually used in the series. Yeah, and, and we didn't. We didn't do the the series or any of the movies. Uh, we just that, that's another gun that we inherited from a collection uh, that came out of the movie Arms Management Collection. Yeah, uh, and and for people that don't, you know, there's a lot of movie myths. One of which is that often repeated that there was no 29s available and they actually used a model 5741 mag. Not true. There were 44 mags model 29s. This happens to be a 29-2 in serial number range, proper configured gun, six and a half. And Carl showed us, by the way, I'll see if you guys can see this. Carl showed us that the cylinder has been welded up and also the barrel might, it's kind of hard to see, the barrel there has been welded up because it was going to be given to one of the directors. It was going to be given to the director, yeah. And he never, never took it? N never got it and we ended up with it and I'm happy. Yeah, it ended up in a good home. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Cool gun. Very cool. AK for a visual, you've got your magazine as well. Oh yeah. Now this is from what? That's the latest uh, Terminator. Oh, the Terminator Genesis. 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 Oh yeah. yeah. Genesis. Terminator Genesis, gang. Right here. So that's a good representation of how we sci-fi things up. A lot of people don't even know that's an AK. You know. Yeah. Oh me. You used an FEG receiver too. Oh, yeah. He used the collector receiver yeah, for collector this. Hungarian receiver. Collector Hungarian, Hungarian we, receiver. <laughs> we got a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Now, what is this like? Are these like from paintball guns or something? That's just you know, there's uh, there was some artwork. I don't know who, who came up with the artist rendition of that, but uh, we just kind of made it come to life between us. Uh, our sister company, Studio Art and Technology, did all the add-on pieces. So mm -hmm. they had a drawing, whether they did it in-house or it came from a production designer from, from the film itself. Um, and you know, cool. Make it look. Excellent. There you go. Thank you, bro. Space gun. All right. This well, one's kind of cool. This Check one's this bad out. at the bone. Yeah, this one is a Wilson Combat Vickers Elite. That was made up at Paul's request for the movie sh or the TV show sh shooter. Yeah, yeah. The uh, technical advisor on the show, um, uh, I think he was looking for something new and cool, and I can't remember exactly how we came about to go to that model, but um, he pinged me, and we I made think it you happen. had some influence. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we made it happen. Very cool. Excellent. You got a couple of these, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those same guns are used in a, a movie that's going to be released here very shortly. I just can't say which one yet, but it is going to be a... Hopefully, it'll be on the big screen as well. Cool. Very cool. And 45, I remember at the time asking him, did he want it in 9 or 45? But he said 45, I guess. 45 blanks, no issues. No. Yeah. No. Both of them run really... Accurate. You can kind of show into the camera the threaded muzzle for the... Yeah, if you guys can the, see uh, that there a little bit. Yeah, you might adapter. go see the threads. Yeah. They did. For, they modified it for the blank adapter. Very cool. Which Thank breaks you, my heart when you got a nice pistol like that. And it is what... That's showbiz, baby. Yeah, that's showbiz. All right. All right. All right. Kind of a piece of history, 1911-wise. Magnum P.I. Tom Selleck. And this was supposed to be the governmental 45 used back in the day. The 9 millimeter was what it was used to work with blanks. So it's a 9 millimeter series 70. So it's a small letter series 70. Yeah. Know. And that's what he used in a series to kind of replicate a GI 1911 that he would have had issued to him when he was a former SEAL. Yeah. And that's, that's another one that came out of a collection. I believe that was Stembridge's collection. Yeah. 
Very cool. Yeah. Excellent. Magnum PI, government model Colt. Very cool. And then we got a gangster gun, 1911 to look at. Yeah. Kind of a cool one. This is from Public Enemy. Public Enemy. And kind of a mock-up of a gun used by the Dillinger gang. Actually, even made in 38 Super, which is what was actually proper. There was an extended mag. There was a gunsmith in Texas who made guns, uh, often, shall we say, for some unsavory characters. And this was one, kind of an adaptation when he came up with. The ones he actually made, converted actually were full auto. Yeah. German guy, right? Yeah. I think he was a German, German guy. Cool. Yeah. Now, did any particular character have this? I can't remember. Um, the it, guy it, that played Baby, baby Face, face yeah. yeah. It, it was, Larry, it was such a quick scene, and it was at night, and it, it was, the, the what well, we went through to build those, and what our gunsmiths went through to build those, it was insane, and then it's, you saw it for a fraction of a second in the movie. You know, that happens a lot. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, what do we got here? So that's a pair of ord, uh, For the accountant. Yeah. Pair ordnance with um, Osprey. Yeah. Suppressor. And funny thing about that one is uh, that was Ben Affleck from the accountant. And that uh, Ben had requested, because initially we were showing a full size Osprey, he wanted it a little shorter. So we cut down, we had some dummy cans that they provided, and we had cut it down ourselves here in house um, and made it work to the actor spec. And coincidentally, a year later, year and a half later, two years later, they came out with a short Osprey. version. <laughs> yeah. Cool. 45? Yes. Excellent. And he did some good work with it. Yeah, he did. It was a pretty decent movie. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Pretty neat. Yeah. Good deal. Oh, here we go. Here you go, Larry. That's going to oh, be... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first movie is probably some of the most iconic guns ever in movies. Harrison Ford, Blade Runner, 2049. And what's interesting, it's obvious, hybrid. Also, this is a Steyr, like a Steyr SSG action or a Steyr... Uh, SL. SL action. And Eden has a Steyr mag on the bottom. If you guys can see that. And and the little dark. The bolt operated, the bolt operated but you see it's got a cylinder. It's yeah, got a cylinder. a cylinder. So it's a Charter Arms Bulldog and a Steyr SL rifle, and there was three of them made for the film. Uh, they did it in Budapest. They did it, they filmed the movie in Budapest. And so we exported the six guns for the film. Wow. Yeah, we never do anything in ones or twos. You gotta have extras in case they break, somebody drops it, and who knows what happens. Cool. Which, by the way, this is a cool movie. I thought they did a good job. Yeah. For a I, sequel, have you I seen it? I haven't seen it yet. No, it's good. They, I think it's. I liked it. Pretty good. Film. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Right on. Good deal. Excellent. Equalizer. Now equalizer. Keanu Reeves, right? Which is Was that Keanu? Reeves? Oh, Equilibrium. Or equilibrium. equilibrium. Oh, I'm Excuse sorry. me. Equilibrium. equilibrium. Christian Bell. Christian Bell. Uh oh, equalizer. I got equalizer on the brain. Wow. Oh, that doesn't end Beretta up. mocked up. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that was filmed in Germany, and uh, there was a bunch of, I think there were six or eight of them, and they, production had taken the guns and modified two or three of them to run pneumatically. Back in the day, nowadays we have solid, solid plug blanks, so we're blocking the bore from any gases escaping. We can do close quarter shooting and stuff. Back in the day, they didn't have that. So what they did is try to get it to operate pneumatically. Yeah. So... This isn't indexing properly, but that's a good uh, representation. This, what do we got here, Carl? Old 1903 or 1908, which is it? 380 or 32? I kind of bought on the magazines. I believe it's a uh, 380. 380, so it'd be a 1908, real early one, yeah. with a mock up of original maximum suppressor. Right. That was notice how they were offset so you could still use the sights? Sights, yeah. What, uh, what movie is this for? The account. Uh, no, Live by, night. Live by Night, another Ben Affleck movie. Cool. Wow. And back in the day, when this, you know, prior to 1934, you could actually go out and buy these things. You could buy the the Maxim suppressor, you could buy the aftermarket barrel, and, and set your gun up like that. Very cool. 
Excellent. Thank you, Carl. No problem. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. Shout out to Spartan117GW for putting it together. Click over here on the MP540 to check out his channel. Here in the middle to subscribe to the Vickers Tactical Channel, click on the Wilson Combat Vickers Elite 9mm Commander. And over here on the BCM M4 Carbine, click on it to check out some of our favorite videos. Have a good one.